right, so welcome to the next installment. I don't know what installment it's going to be. It depends on how I shake the footage out, but welcome to the next installment of the Moto Vlog series that I'm hoping to do. Hopefully it works out. If you're watching it, it worked out. And this is the you know, highlights and uh, adventures that I'm uh, having with the Grom and the Monkey this year. Every year we take a family vacation to uh, northern Pennsylvania, right on the border of New York. And there's just really good trails and dual sport riding up there. And uh, I have both of these bikes kind of set up to do that as most of my riding back home in Florida is off-road and, you know, sand and just tooling around the neighborhood. So this year we made a stop in Indiana, central Indiana, to stay with uh, some friends. My wife's from this area and we uh, decided to take a couple weeks off and stop up here and see the friends and um, I brought both of the bikes so we can enjoy some of these awesome country roads here. Insert John Denver song. Because I don't really get to ride roads like this in Florida. It's it's usually just straight then turn, straight then turn. It's uh there's no character to the roads down there. I honestly don't know why other than because of the weather being warm year-round. Why is riding so popular in Florida? It just doesn't make sense to me that, you know, it's mostly like big Harleys and cruisers and you know, comfortable bikes, highway bikes, but for a little bike like this in Florida, I mean, unless you're just doing what I do around the neighborhood and backyard stomping and stuff, it's just like no point to try to go out and do worth while riding in Florida. Uh, there's like Grom squads and stuff and that would be fun. Uh, I could see the fun of that, but just going out like on your nightly cruise and stuff, you know, it's good to, it's good to get out, get the wind, you know, through you, but um, man, you just can't beat riding like this. So, and uh, our second leg of the trip in upper PA is gonna be even better because a lot of the roads are gonna be dirt as well as roads like this so this is uh gonna be a basically a travel vlog or travel moto vlog about my uh my trip you know what i'm doing with the motorcycles where i'm going and challenges that i'm gonna be presented with and challenges that i'm gonna present the bikes with and introducing a rider to a grom a new rider my friend matt in front of me he's on the grom He's a rider, he's a, but he's not a new rider. I said new rider, but new to a Grom rider. So he's had a, you know, like a Honda Shadow before. So he's familiar with riding. He's got his motorcycle license, but he's never ridden a Grom, but he's had interest in a Grom. So I said, man, I'll bring the Grom up there and let him fly around on it for a couple days. He'll, he'll surely want to get one. So we did this yesterday and it was, uh, as soon as we got back, he was looking up Groms on Marketplace, so I think I converted another person to to Grom World. And, uh, yeah, we're having fun right now just cruising Indiana corn country or whatever the kind of crop that is. I don't know. Uh, we're just uh, having fun, man. It's, it's like 8 o'clock at night, too. It's crazy how bright it is. So this is basically like a little guided country road tour. Matt's leading the way. He knows these roads. He travels them every day. The uh, the crests and the hills and the you know elevation changes on the turns and stuff, as well as the the dampness on the roads where the trees are on the concrete, really are all elements that I'm not familiar with. And you know I don't want to come into a corner too hot not knowing the environment and the elements you can see right here the road has dark shadows on them that's that's dampness that's not sun shadow so those things are of course sketchy on motorcycles but even more sketchy on the Shinko mobber tires so along with these vlogs motor vlogs I hope to offer some insight as to what's going on with the bikes and the mods that I've put on them 
and how good they are at dual sporting and how up to the task they are and how well I prepared them and if the preparations have worked, what I could do better, um, what I might change, what I might improve, what I might take off. Anyways, all those aspects. Are these bikes up to the task? And how do you want to configure your Grom or your Monkey to do what you want to do? Basically, right here, country road cruising like this with your occasional jolt off-road you know uh, you see a little trail or a field you want to cut through well, how do you prepare your bike for that so with the monkey it has Shinko mobber tires on it it has 14 tooth front sprocket 36 tooth rear sprocket it has the man in the box M take which you can probably hear it's a nice good intake sound I had the Yoshimura RS3 exhaust on for a while but recently I had a cutting out problem with the motor and that's a long story that's in another video but with that I had to dial the bike back to the uh, stock ECU so I lost my flash I had an ECU that was flash for the mods and uh, that of course it was the ECU that was in question and getting kind of uh, it was glitchy so that's that's the end of the story on that and I uh, switched back to the stock ECU and all was good so basically I lost my rich fuel maps from that flash so going back to the stock ECU you're going back to the stock fuel maps and with that if you're running an intake and an exhaust you're flowing a lot more air but you're not pushing the fuel to it that you were before so I needed to dial one of the mods back and that was a tough one because it was either take the intake off or take the exhaust off both of these things I really like so considering that I was coming up here and doing a kind of a dual sport tour I decided to take the Yoshimura pipe off and um, put the stock pipe back on so that actually I think was a really good choice and I always loved the look of the stock pipe but the problem was the big catalytic converter assembly underneath I, that was just so obtuse and uh, just in the way as far as ground clearance went in my opinion so I, I got rid of that in favor of the Yoshimura so going back to it I was a little bit concerned about losing that ground clearance but you know it's a pretty stout assembly down there I'm thinking that if I bang it up a little bit, you know, it's mostly for like log hopping and everything. And where we're gonna go in Pennsylvania on these trails, you know, there's logs down all over. So you have to kind of wheelie over these things or jump over them sometimes. That might, that might be a little bit more difficult now with the stock catalytic converter and stuff in there. But if I bang it up a few times, you know, that's, that's, that's okay. But we're gonna test it out. That's one of the things I'm gonna test out. So it adds uh, another facet of the moto vlogs and reviews and information that I can provide to you. So I guess the thing I'll focus on on this vlog on with the bikes and what's going on is the mob or tires because that's like the biggest change that you're going to do to your bike when you go adding off-road capability. So that's my question. Obviously it adds off-road capability, but is the on-road performance worth the, uh, the sacrifice, you know? Are you sacrificing your on-road performance for the off-road performance? 